roadways adjacent to this. So that's currently what is proposed here in an open environment, um, wanting to invite others in. There's lighting is proposed with this as well with LED lighting that would meet dark skies compliance. Uh, there's also a, re, a, a six inch post tension overlay on top of the existing basketball and tennis courts that are also dual strike for pickleball. So those would get a complete reconstruction too, which would be a welcome because the courts are not in good shape there. At all. What is the closest residence? That's the only concern I would have with these in the lower fences. As you know, everybody complains about the sound from pickleball courts and what the impact would be on those. I know out of the Highlands, we're doing an acoustic fence on a 10 foot high fence to help deaden that sound. So that's an alternate on this bid proposal, so that'll be in front of council and they, the elected officials can make that decision. It's not inexpensive I know. at all. I know. <laughs> and what is the sound that comes from a pickleball court? That's quite loud. Actually. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's surprising. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, so we have noise abatement as an option, which brings up then the walls to 12 feet and all the way around the courts. And you need the noise abatement all the way around, just doing them on the ends. Sounds going to travel out the side. So a part of what is brought forward to city council on the fourth does include an alternate if they would elect to go that way. There's not enough funding to go to add that. So something will have to go away, whether if that's lighting or the resurfacing of the other courts. Um, tough decision to make. The, to answer the, the direct question, how far away are residents? They're roughly 150 feet away on the southern side. Not too much of a difference from the existing basketball courts that are dual strike for pickleball today. We've yet to get receive any noise complaints. I don't know if others have, and they just haven't made their way, but staff can say we have not received any complaints regarding noise here. Uh, we also went ahead and decided to meet with the group at Forest Highlands regarding their experience and, and everything with um, their noise study. But it's not a noise study for this exact location, so there's really no data no, that I'm going to present. And our closest home out there is over 700 feet away. Correct. Yeah. It, it was nice just to be in receipt of that information, but it's nothing, it's, there are no metrics that I can provide. Yeah, we are this. an acoustic engineer. We dropped one end of the court and made the other end higher so it would reverberate out to the high reverse towards the homes. Yeah. So it should be an interesting conversation. We're anticipating that something about noise comes up, but who knows? Yeah. But yes, that's on April 4th. And it says, and I know you said it's old news, but the May to August of this year, is that going to be fed up because it's April 4th? Um, you know, yes, I think so. Um, well, so yes, I think May to August, without a doubt, there'll be a cure period for the for the concrete of the ports themselves. Um, it'd be lovely if we're putting the coatings on it by August, but we'll just see what happens. Mother Nature is always in charge, so you just never know. But that's crazy. Yeah. By the fall, we have we could it's so cool. mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, and with the addition of these eight courts and then the eight that are their dual strike, that makes 16 at this one location. That's yeah. pretty impactful for the community. Talking about Yes. Exactly. I think you're going to do alternate designs and try to massage. Is this just kind of showing that you can get eight in there, or, or is this the kind of the official layout? This is the concept layout, not the official layout. You know, I really can't, since the contract is design build, I don't have much of a design beyond concept layout until I can get a contract approved. Right. That's like Other see. questions? All right, Coach Parsons. I think I'd like to see less impact on some of the existing walkways. There's a way to do that. Awesome. But that's my comment. That's all.
Thank you, Coach Air Parsons. That's it. Yeah, you know, looking at the picture, um, smack dab on that sidewalk. Uh, but yeah, you guys, you guys know what you're doing out there, and uh, uh, I, I think is that Ramada. So that Ramada is going to be right next to the pickleball court. So if you if you rent that Ramada for a birthday party, and uh, you have you know you're kind of sandwiched between a pickleball tournament, uh, that could be rough. Just uh, Keeping that in mind, and we, you know, I was one of the people I think with the pickleball talking about revenue and, and cost recovery and rentals, and now you know that that could be an opportunity lost of trying to rent that Ramada when you have pickleball games going on, um, potentially. But just that, that's my two cents on that part of it. I think it's our least rented Ramada because there's nothing else around. <laughs> well, then maybe you'll get some great use from the pickleballers. Even right. now, that'll be good too. Yep, stay for pickleball. <laughs> Uh, any other uh, questions from commissioners? Uh, insights from the the. Uh, oh, I had a question. How the heck do you get risk management to give out um, those uh, yak tracks? That was so because we've been doing full moon hikes too, and I'm looking at the uh, the open spaces. God, those yak tracks or the uh, what are they called? Snow ice cleats. I, that, that was incredible. Is that you guys got a, a risk management to donate that for a full moon hike? So kudos, anyway. Kudos for that. Anybody else have anything? Who did you ask? We just asked for risk management. I'm actually not sure oh. where they used it. Uh, they have a surplus of the ice cleats. So. There you go, Ricky. You just got to ask. You also have snowshoes as well. Yeah. It was getting deep. That's pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the county they gave us one staff all I think one free pair of yak tracks, and you had to buy any extras. Uh, that you got your one as an employee, and mine broke after like the first you know three years. I think uh, they were gone, so I've yet to get another pair of replacement pair of yak tracks. But you know that's really cool that you guys partnered with uh, Risk for that. Did they get to keep them, or is it just to use it for that time? Um, so attendees just use it for that time, and then I think they're recirculating them for each uh, hike given the continuous snow. Okay. All right, yeah. I got an idea now. Thank you, Haley. Thank you, Pro's team. All right, last call for any other comments before we move to the next item, which is where uh, Commissioner Stackhouse had something to discuss. So uh, if nothing else, let's move on to informational items to and from commissioners and staff. And if it's okay, I'm going to give Commissioner Stackhouse the first uh, opportunity to speak today. Yeah, so we totally random had a former employee come in and I was just talking to her about her account, but she mentioned they were talking about something about that park over there in, and I can't think of it. Ponderosa Trails. Ponderosa Trails. There has been a, a huge influx, and Ricky, this is kind of for the county too. Um, it was posted on a couple different social media sites that that is a cool place to go and sled. What, what, it, what is, I mean, I'm, you're nodding your head like this, you've already heard this before. What, it, she was just curious. I was like, I would love to bring this to uh, pros because I, I think this is our job is to hear from the community and then bring it up to you guys. Is there something being done to deter Phoenicians from going to that place? Is that something we they, we want to do? Um, I know from the county's perspective, we would love to have them over at Snowplay. But what I'm hearing is that the reason they're going to Ponderosa is because Snowplay is like sold out. So. So Ponderosa Trails Park is not listed on our winter recreation map no, as a not, location not, to go. Not there, but on social media sites, Correct. it's just being like propagated that right. this is a cool place to go and if you can't get a snow play, so. Right, and you know, we can't control right. what the public chooses to post on social no, media. No, um, it, I didn't, we did not receive as many complaints about that location this season as we did last season oh, right. not sure why or if they're just not reaching us there's more snow everywhere so they don't they, Maybe. Park, they can park on the side of the highway <laughs> in more locations yeah so didn't receive as many 
issues, thank goodness. Uh, it's not an ideal place. There's no parking lot. On street parking is not ideal there with the thin roads. It encumbers our snow operation on the roads. It's a not a good location. Well, and, and here's where the rubber met the road for me, because at first I thought she was kind of just playing, to be honest. But then she said that somebody got hurt at some point and they needed EMS over there. Yeah. And the EMS couldn't get through. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's that's a bigger problem than mm -hmm. just we don't want these patients here. So, yes, I think, and that's why it's, you guys it's, not, a, it's not a location that we promote or right. put on a map. Uh, again, heavier conversations last snow season about that location than this snow season, in, in my opinion. Uh, but yes, and I believe it was last snow season that that event did occur, where emergency services could, could not get through. through. Okay. With all the cars parked on both sides of the road with whatever snow play going on. We did experience something similar to that at our identified snow play areas this season. Thorpe Park was inundated and it was very difficult to get down any of the roads, including for emergency services. It was honestly quite scary. I see Rebecca has her hand up. Um, so like yeah, said, it, it's I, a difficult I thing. You guys yeah. were aware, but when she said it, I was like, it's a real thing. Yeah, go ahead, Rebecca. Well, I just wanted to offer, um, if the commission is interested, we could have a full conversation about snow play and the planning and ideas and how we participate with a regional team of snow play. Um, well, the, there's a regional team that works on snow play issues that we participate in. We could um, have an agenda item to discuss those items if you'd like. Since this is not agendized, I just want to be careful about the continued conversation. Yeah, I would love to hear about it because then I could reply back to her that I presented her in Congress. Right. <laughs> yeah, it could be a future item if we want to for the next yeah. meetings, but a good even download of end in the snow season too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so in that, that, in that one, the informational item presented was that people might be snow playing in the Ponderosa Trails Park, and we might want to have a further discussion on snow play at the city. So. Uh, I think that is a good idea for the next uh, meeting. Any other informational items to or from commissioners and staff? There are very early discussions of a partnership with the city and the county on, on an event here in the summertime, not including costumes in the park. Very early discussion, but uh, we'll, we'll be able to do something with that later. Um, Nothing from really on the county side of business and that I think would be good for you all to know. Commissioners, anything? How about items for the next uh, meeting? Uh, information for the March 20th meeting and things we'd like to discuss maybe in addition to snow play. Um, uh, there looks like potentially a review and discussion of the fees and uh, policy uh for pros anything else we want to throw on to the march or i'm sorry for the april agenda that's it agenda items for march 20th but it's actually the april meeting yes that will be april 17th i believe error on that could i make a request since i i don't know if i'm the only one who brought this up but i know it's something that i mentioned in a previous meeting about Someone brought to my attention, like uh, a homeless person who wanted to take a shower and had to pay, and he couldn't get in, and so she had to pay for him. And ask, similar to what Josh was saying, yeah. someone just came to me and I was like, oh, I can bring it up. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be here uh, in April, but will be in May. So if we could, would we be able to have that discussion in May so that I can be part of it? Absolutely. That's one of the. And so would that be a question regarding our fee structure? Yeah, the, but, that was, this, she was the, like, the fee structure dovetailed from what he was talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, uh, I don't know, yeah, it seems like the person who needs a shower should be able to just do that. But I understand the structure, so that's, I was just curious how that worked. And 
if there was a way that we could um, talk about ways in which people who are unable to afford that fee would still be able to use a city like public facility. Right, okay, so plus other resources yeah. that are in the community for yeah. hygiene, okay. Um, okay, is that, yeah, so it sounds like that could be a subset underneath the future discussion regarding fees and fee policy. So we can push that to May, so not have that in April. Sounds like April we could have kind of a, a download on the snow season and what those impacts are to our grounds. What else for April? You guys, you guys manage the, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is completely off subject, but um, you guys manage the snow removal for all the parks. Is it kind of being thought that this is one, this is a one-off year, or are, are you guys planning on this being more of a norm? What is it? Regarding well, snowfall? Yeah, yeah, so right now it's, and, and it's, yes, yeah, so we do. The parks part of the pros is responsible for about 68 parking lots, so majority of our city facilities, not just park parking lots, 24 miles of the urban trail to plow. And Heritage Square, because the snow needs to get off the square, and then there's also a downtown hauling operation. We also shovel in various locations approximately about two miles of length of sidewalks. Uh, and then so work in coordination with the streets team that is plowing the roadways and uh, some other features. Uh, it's quite the operation, to be honest. Then we also have our courtesy berm removal program, which prior to this snow season was at approximately about 85 addresses. It's well over 160 at this point. So that's increased dramatically, which is a, a it's taxing to resources. But we do it and that's where we go out and remove the berm that's created at the end of an individual's driveway that's a, a valid candidate for that service um what do we think an outlook will look like in future snow seasons honestly don't know that those we get those resources from national weather service before usually in about october before a snow season truly begins on what they think it may resemble so far this year this is the third highest in accumulation over for the whole season. So say from that uh, October through uh, whenever our last storm will be, usually in April or May, um, third highest in 100 years. And it'll become the highest if we get 13 more inches of accumulation. Which we're getting tonight. Just, Maybe, we'll see. That is incredible. Yeah. Well, I guess I just was it's been wild. If, it's, if they give you guys some resources as to how to plan for that, if that's gonna, if this atmospheric river thing is just kind of here to stay, right. we're just right in the delta of it, and this is just how it's going to be. Or, well, they were no, I think the questions are resources have not changed. So our FTE counts, so our individuals to go perform these tasks has not changed, nor has the equipment to do it. We have been utilizing, as we have our first toolcat, utilitarian vehicle that is amazing with snow we have a second one on the way that'll help us hit these locations better quicker uh, yeah just hey. one day. Hey, yeah Amy. <laughs> before we get started, guys that we will push fault. that to april we'll yeah out. there you go thank you back up so sorry <laughs> We will talk about snow season. yeah we can highlight all those items so we can talk about resources what it looks like uh, what we think the future holds, what might need to be changed, or future budget requests because of a, a weather season. Because we also have a summer season now that unfortunately floods with with fires. So maybe it's even just like a seed, but a weather seasonal outlook or what impacts we can expect because of that. I, I would love to hear okay. all about that. So. That could actually be a fun April discussion. Anything, Anything else, for else for April? Oh, look at that. Yeah, same page. Anything else for April? What about what's planned for the upcoming summer as far as, you know, within parks and rec, as far as any projects or improvements or anything like that? We could have that on there as an agenda item. Uh, go ahead, Rebecca. I mean, I'm just telling you. 
Yeah, I'm just curious for a little bit more information because I think we've been trying trying to provide that. Um, in the February meeting, we talked about the upcoming parks projects yeah. and recreation projects. That's true. So. so, yeah, just let us know if there's something specific that you'd like to hear more about. Okay. Oh, yeah, and if you have something that comes up between now and before that agenda goes out, let us uh, send it to uh, staff. Uh, we'll get it on the agenda. I think we could keep on there. Maybe we just label it as budget because uh, by the next time our next meeting on April 17th, we will uh, we will add a full budget retreat. So never mind. But we can keep that on there as an agenda just to briefly cover if that's OK with everyone. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, uh, well, the next meeting is April 17th. Uh, Four o'clock, and uh, hope to see everybody there. If there's nothing else. I think we can adjourn early. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Amanda gets in trouble. Go stack house. Come on, man. Cut it out. <laughs> Is it still working? No. Once I get it. Oh, one more. <laughs>